and welcome to Miranda Made. In this video, I'm going to be showing you five vintage seam finishes from this book, The Butterick Sewing and Dressmaking Book. This is a book I did a flip through um, a few, maybe a couple months ago or so, um, and I'll put a link in the description if you want to watch that. But these are five true vintage seam finishes, and I'll show you exactly how to do those. Let's get into the video. So here is the Butterick Sewing and Dressmaking book, which I did a flip through before. I will put that in the description below. And today I want to show you five seams from this book. So let's start with what it just says about seams in general. Hopefully you're going to be able to see this. It says, know the purpose and finishes of seams. The type of seam and the finish depends on the style of the garment, the fabric, and the use of the seam in the garment. Plain seams are used most extensively, and they are either pressed open or to one side of the stitching, following our suggestions for the use of the different types of seams and finishes. Okay, so this is interesting, um, the plain seam being the most often used, because um, so much of the fabric today just ravels easily, especially cottons. And if you look down here, a plain seam means you literally just sew it together and you don't do anything with it other than pressing it open or pressing it to one side. So does that mean our fabric is worse than it used to be? I'm not sure, but if you have any thoughts on that, please leave a comment. Anyway, it goes on to say, dresses and blouses of rayon silk, lightweight wool, and firmly woven cottons, plain seam finishes with overcasting, pinked, bound or edges, turned under and stitched. Okay, so here we have some our first recommendations of what type of seam to use. Dresses of heavy wool or other heavy fabrics such as fall and heavy rayon crepes, plain seams overcast or pinked. Dresses and blouses of sheer fabrics, plain seams, edges turned under and stitched, double stitched, hem stitched, rolled edge seams and French seams. Coats and jackets, plain seams. If lined, the seams need no finish. Facings and hems are kept in place with the catch stitching. If unlined, the edges are bound or turned under and stitched. This finish is used on cotton, linen, rayon, silk, and wool, shirts and pajamas, flat fell seams, overcoats, welt seams, and plain seams, lingerie, French seams, flat fell, top stitch, wash dresses, and children's dresses, plain seams, overcasting, turned under and stitched, pinked, flat fell, French seams if the fabric is not heavy. Infants wear, catch stitching is sometimes used to keep seams flat and for trimming um, in, on their kimonos, flannel slips, and nightgowns. Okay, so these are the recommendations of which seams to use. Today I want to show you the open seam overcast. Overcasting prevents raveling. Use diagonal stitches about one eighth of an inch deep and about one quarter of an inch apart. Do not pull stitches tightly. So we're gonna do that one, which is pictured here. 
All right, so first you have to do a regular seam before you can do a seam finish. So in case you're not sure how to do that, you just put right sides together. And, well, match them as well as you can. But even if they're not perfectly matched, you won't see it on the other side. You'll see it on the wrong side, but you won't see it on the right side. And then you just go ahead and pin it so it doesn't move around on you when you go to sew it either by hand or by machine. A lot of people did do hand sewing even in the 1940s if you couldn't afford a machine. And they did a lot of finishes with hand sewing. I'm going to sew this seam by machine um, first. I'm going to stitch it 5 eighths of an inch, just like you do for almost all patterns. Good to have a little trash can near you to throw away your threads. Okay, so let me take it over to you. This is the basic seam. You can see I backstitched the beginning and end. Now, before I can do anything else, I have to press this open. Let me take you over to the ironing board. Okay, so I'm gonna stitch this open here by laying it flat and pressing it down. Okay. Using uh, black thread as you, so you can easily see it, I am going to just stitch this overcasting stitch by hand so you can really see what that looks like. It takes quite a bit of time. It ends up being kind of like a whip stitch, um, but you don't want to pull it too tight because you still want those seams to lie nice and flat. So you can see right here how it looks. And then after I get a few stitches down, I'll show it up close so you can see exactly what it would look like in real life. Okay, this is the open seam overcast. So let's move on to closed seam overcast. Closed seams overcast. If seams cannot be pressed open, trim and overcast together. So we're gonna do that which is right here, this picture. Now, for closed seam overcast, it's almost the same, except you're not going to open the seam and overcast it. You're gonna trim it down, so maybe to like a quarter of an inch. So let's do that. 
down. And then overcast it. So same as before, get your thread, needle and thread, and do those kind of whip stitch all the way down the seam. Oopsie, you don't want to pull it too tight. And you definitely want it on the correct side. Definitely I can say the more someone does this, the neater and easier it will get. But it's definitely not as fast as doing something on a machine. But people used to do it and you still can. So this is what that stitch would look like. And of course, of course, you'll continue all the way down until your seam is completely overcast. All right, so this is seam type two. Now, oh, and of course you would, after you overcast it, you will press it open like this. So you're finished, it would be all the way, um, overcast all the way down compared to this one where it's pressed open and then overcast on both sides. It's a little different. I would think this one is gonna be faster. <laughs> All right, and then let's take a look at, I wanna have an honorable mention here. Pinked seams definitely would be probably the easiest, but you need pinking shears. Now I do have pinking shears, but unfortunately they need to be sharpened and I have not found a place that can do that. And I tried some quote unquote internet hacks, but they didn't work for me. So I will get them professionally done probably next time I'm in the U S cause I couldn't find anyone in, in Korea to do that. And they're not cheap, but they're really high quality pinking shears. So I don't want to throw them out. Okay. But anyway, you know, for a pink seam, all you have to do is cut your fabric out and the pinking is gonna keep it from fraying. Or they say you can snip small pointed pieces with cutting shears. This. So you're going all the way down this way. I'm not sure if it would matter if you do this way, but this is how it would look if it's pinked and then you go all the way down. Anyway, that's another option. Okay, let's move on to the third seam finish. And this one is where you use bound edges. So again, there's two options. You can lay them flat like this and then bind them. Um, but I'm just going to show you how to do this one here, which is very similar. So these are the open seam bound edges or the closed seam bound edges, and that's just using binding along the edge. So I will show you for the closed seam bound edge, you just need bias tape. You can get it pre-made or you can make your own. And then you just insert the seam into the binding and baste and stitch. You could use your little fabric clips here if you have those or just pin it and then take it over to the machine and that's your finish. So let's do that. We've got our machine here. Um, I'm stitch down there, make sure I keep my seam all nice and bound.
of course you would press it to one side. So you go in with your iron and press it here and your seam is definitely nice and bound. You don't have to worry about any fraying. And then I'm gonna do the plain seam stitched edges. Turn under about one eighth an inch and stitch using a fairly long stitch in loose tension. The seam is pressed open. So it looks like here, this one. So first you want to just fold um, the seams open and press it so that it stays. And then you're ready to kind of fold under the sides. As you can see here, I'm just folding it under each half of the seam and pressing it in place. Here it is, pressed under. Now we just take it back to the machine and stitch it down. Like this, but it should keep the bottom from fraying so much and then on the outside of course you can't even tell so that is option number four the last one I will show you here let's see oh yes the last one is the simulated French seam which I really like so again, we need the iron for that. So I'm gonna show you that over there. And you make a plain seam and turn the edges in toward each other, then stitch the edges together by machine or by hand. Simulated French seam. First, oops, let me make sure everything is nice and pressed. Like always, open those seams. so you can see where you're working. Then you're gonna fold it in up oh, 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 to the seam line almost and press like so. Kinda like you're making a bias tape. And then you're gonna fold these together and it looks like you have a fringe seam. So here it is up close. I've pressed it in towards the seam line and then fold it over and let's go stitch it down. what it looks like. Look how nice that is. And then when you open it up, of course, it looks just like a normal seam. And you can pre you press this to one side. Simulate a French seam. Okay. I hope you have enjoyed this video of five vintage seam finishes from the 1940s, and I hope you'll try them on your projects at home. Thank you so much for watching. Please take a minute to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.